Recall that the concept of linear momentum, P, and the principle of conservation of linear momentum are extremely powerful tools. They allow us to predict the outcome of, say, a collision between two cars without knowing the details of that collision. Here we begin a discussion of the angular counterpart of P. Our figure shows a particle of mass M with linear momentum P as it passes through point A in the XY plane. The angular momentum L of this particle with respect to the origin O is a vector quantity defined as R cross P, where R is the position vector of the particle with respect to O. As the particle moves relative to point O in the direction of its momentum, position vector R rotates about point O. Note carefully that to have angular momentum about point O, the particle does not itself have to be rotating. It can be moving in a straight line with momentum P. But you can think of the angular momentum as the vector R rotating about point O. So in our equation, L stands for angular momentum of a particle. I put that in parentheses because later we're going to talk about angular momentum of a collection of particles, which will be capital L. P is the linear momentum of the particle, and R is the position vector of the particle with respect to the spot where it is thought to be uh, rotating about or have angular momentum about that point. In this diagram, it is the origin. And it is the cross product. Just like when we talked about torque, torque is the cross product of R and F. Angular momentum is the cross product of R and P. So that means the magnitude of the angular momentum is RP sine phi. And just like with torque, we can associate the sine phi with one or the other. If we associate it with P, as, in, as we do here in this diagram, then we use the component of P that is perpendicular to R. And if we associate the sine phi with R, then we multiply the full value of P times the perpendicular distance to the extension of P. When we talked about torque, this was called the line of action of the force. Now, because it's momentum, we're going to call it the extension. But it is still, our perpendicular is the shortest distance from O to the extension. And angular momentum is a vector. What is its direction? So as we did with torque, we move the momentum vector to point O so that it is tail to tail with vector R. And then we take our right hand and we sweep our fingers of our right hand from R towards P. So R cross P moving from R towards P. And the thumb of our right hand will point in the direction of the vector L. And we know that momentum, P is equal to mass times velocity. So we can rewrite this R cross P as R cross MV, and since M is a scalar, we can pull it outside of the cross product and say that the linear momentum of a particle is equal to mass times the cross product of R and V. And once again, just as before, we can asso associate the sine phi with V, or we can associate it with R, and if we associate it with V, we would write it as R times M times V perpendicular, and that is uh, the perpendicular component of momentum there, m times v perpendicular. Or if we write it this way, m times v times r perpendicular, m times v is momentum p. We can rewrite it as p times r perpendicular. Let's look at this sample problem. Read the description of the problem and try to answer these questions. Rank the particles according to the magnitudes of their angular momentum, about point O, greatest first. And then, which particles have negative angular momentum, about point O? Pause the video here and see if you can answer these questions, and then come back 
and check your answers on the next slide. The problem first asks us to rank them according to their angular momentum. So our equation for angular momentum is L equals R cross P, which for this example, if we notice that the momentum is the same for all the particles, they all have the same mass and they all have the same velocity, so they all have the same P. So if I rewrite this equation to say R perpendicular times P, since P is the same for all of them, uh, but if I rank them according to their R perpendiculars, I'll be able to rank them by their angular momentum. So I see that uh, 1 and 3 have the same R perpendicular, and they are the greatest. The R perpendicular for 2 and 4 are also the same, but they're less. So that means uh, 1 and 3 are the same, which is more than 2 and 4, which are the same. And then you see that R perpendicular for 5, the extension of P for 5 goes right through the point O about which we're describing our angular momentum. So that has an R perpendicular of 0, so that would be last. Next they ask us, which particles have negative angular momentum? Remember, if we draw the vectors tail to tail, we sweep our right hand from R to P. So, so for number one, there's my R vector, and I move my P vector so that it's tail to tail, and I sweep my right hand from R to P, and I see using the right hand rule that my thumb is pointing out of the page. In other words, this is like a counterclockwise movement of my hand, so that's the positive direction. For three, there's R, and if I move it so that it's tail to tail, there's R and there's P. Now when I sweep my hand from R to P, my thumb points into the board, which is the negative direction. So basically you can just look at it like it's a clock and see that compared to O, three is moving in a clockwise up here, that's clock clockwise. Two is also clockwise, so three and two are going to be negative, and one and four, that way and that way, are going to be positive. And five, we decided, was zero, so it has no direction.